my heart was beating very, very fast and he was, he was looking at me and I thought, is it, is it, is it? And then the more he was coming out with, the more I realised it was definitely my mum, definitely. My mum was called Mavis. She was a very ladylike lady, which Tony got completely right. She was very prim and proper, but she was very gentle as well. And he got her personality spot on. Everything he said about her was my mum. Um, down to she used to have this habit of changing the sheets every five minutes and he even came out with that licorice all sorts she, she liked all the licorice all sorts but not the ones with little bits on she didn't like those and it was just silly little things but to me it was my mum then she puts me in a car and I feel like I want to drive her car this was her the first proper new car that she'd ever had in her life she was so proud of it um, and I've got good memories about that, her taking care of it and taking me out in it and being proud and everything. And, um, but we were really, really, really close and he, he managed to capture her personality and the way that we were with each other, I think. It came, it came across that how close we were and how similar we were in our personalities and everything else. There's a real sense here of looking out to the field and I see horses here. A big childhood memory was us going down the end of the road where we had a big field at the end of our road and to feed the horses. She makes reference, silly little things, about ironing her knickers. Tony mentioned a family member ironing her knickers and that was my aunt who lived on her own, she never married and she used to iron everything, flannels, knickers, vests, socks. Anything that could be iron, she would iron. And when he came out with that, it just cracked me up because I remembered it. Um, I was talking about it the other day with my partner and it just made me laugh. She brings here the contents of her handbag. It must have weighed a tonne, because there's loads of stuff in it. <laughs> everything went into this handbag, absolutely everything. Makeup, keys, uh, first aid kit, um, sewing kits, um, plasters, everything went into this handbag and in the end she, she just said oh I just put it in my handbag and it was so heavy <laughs> and when she passed we had to all her belongings delved out and there was this great big handbag and obviously they'd taken some bits out but um, I think what she was trying to say when she said look after it was I've still got the contents I haven't actually got the handbag anymore but I've still got the contents of the handbag like lipsticks that you know sort of got that much on them and things like that but I've kept them because they were mum's she wasn't a big one for perfume, but what she wore was like a dab there and a dab there. When mum passed, um, I got the phone call, and just before I got the phone call in the morning, I had this lovely smell, and it was my mum's perfume, and I cannot remember the name of it, but it probably, I could go back and try and find out, but it's a beautiful smell filled my bedroom, and I knew that, my, that the phone was going to ring, and it did. It was almost as though she was coming back to say, you know, I'm going now, and it was a smell that, a perfume I associated with mum, and mum only. Now, you have felt, you've woke up where there's been like a real steady breeze in your face. I was as fast asleep, or so I thought, and I felt this sort of cold breeze, like something blowing in my face. And I sort of woke up and I thought, oh, no, I'm just imagining it. And then, then I woke my partner in the morning and I said, um, you know, I felt this blowing in my face. And I said, I wonder if it was mum. And I thought, oh, no, don't be silly. And she actually came through Tony and said, it was me. It wasn't your imagination. So that, and that was just, you know, brilliant. Your mother would have dyed her hair blonde, darling. Yes. That's it. But she wasn't a natural blonde, no, no. disrespect. Mum always wanted blonde hair. She was quite dark, really. Um, but as she got older, she was getting greyer. So I used to be a hairdresser and I used to tint her hair and it was getting lighter and lighter. But obviously, right to the last minute, she had some roots showing and she... <laughs> <laughs> she was absolutely mortified to think that she was going to go with her roots showing. So when Tony said that she'd had her hair, it was naturally blonde now. It's just what she wanted. And that was really good. <laughs> and your mother, my love, had pain yes. here in the chest here. She had cancer of the digestive tract, which Tony pointed out a pain. She always had this sort of indigestion pain here. And first of all, he said it was me. And I said, no, um, it was definitely mum. And it was, he pointed to exactly the place where she used to get the pain. So that was quite amazing, really, that he knew that. You yourself have two children. Yes. That's it. But then you've lost a baby, darling. When I was 15, I had a termination. And um, years later, I was told by um, another medium that the child grows up in the spirit world, because I was devastated, basically. Um, and the child grows up in the spirit world. And I always wondered um, if mum had met my baby. And when Tony said that she'd got a baby in her arms and I should have had three children, and I've got two daughters living, that was just it. Absolutely, I couldn't believe it. So that's what I wanted to hear and he told me what I wanted to hear.
And with that, I say God bless you and thank you for listening to me. I feel so much better now about everything now that I've seen Tony and he's given me these messages from my mum, which I've been dying. She died 13 years ago and I've been trying to build up the courage to try and get in contact with her. And I'm so pleased that I came here today because he's just, I just feel so much calmer about everything and I'm so happy. I can't believe it that she's still, you know, looking after me really. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please thank my guest today, Mr Tony Stockwell. <laughs>